what's the first thing someone that wants to become an IGL should work on improving? Uh, oh, okay. One thing I think is, is, is maybe not talked about enough. Let's say your IGL, you have a really good plan. What I think something that's important is like, okay, let's say your IGL, let's say you have more experience than all of your, your teammates and, uh, you want to go over a new map. Let's say you want to go over train. What it, what is really important, I think is because this game is based around fundamentals, small individual decisions, things like pressure and map control and intangibles, you need everyone to understand. I think one way to get all of that across is to explain and talk about with your team, what your goal is of the map. You know, like let's take outside on train, for example, if, if you're, let's say, what, what, what are we trying to do outside? Okay. We throw, you know, we, we, every round we throw a sandwich smoke, we throw the cross smoke. You know, why do we do that? We're trying to deny information. We're trying to bake grenades forward. We're trying to whatever, like this kind of thing is a very important part about like, um, how, how getting everyone on the same page is explaining what your goals are on the map. Uh, you know, your, what's your map philosophy. If you, you know, if, if you as an IGL understand that getting a player to this position is incredibly powerful on T side, getting this smoked, having a flash come over here and getting someone to turn this corner. It's an incredibly important position. The amount of angles it opens up all this stuff. You need to not just say, I need you to go back six this round, right? What you need your point, your, your teammate to know is why they, they want to be in back six. If everybody understands why back six, why this position and how it compromises all these angles, how it opens up the site, how it just anchors all of your rotations it come flooding in. Everyone can just run across knowing that all of these spots are open. If they understand that, then they'll, they'll understand what the values of getting back six. And then the next, you know, when they go and take it, they're not going to overextend. They're not going to approach it incorrectly. They're not going to do like all of these things will just fall in after that. They understand the philosophy of the map. They understand what your goal is or like why you want something. Then everything else will start to make sense and everyone will start to make better decisions. And, and everybody will also like just work together more naturally because there's too many decisions and too many moments in every round where somebody can take some random decision. You can't micromanage every single one. There's, there's, this is why micromanaging is bad. Okay. People talk about micromanaging sometimes, but this is why micromanaging is bad because you cannot, this is not an, we're not playing Starcraft. Okay. We're not, we're, if we were playing Starcraft, which some IGLs, some I, shit IGLs out there, they think they're playing Starcraft. They think you control every single unit and move them across the board and not tell those units why they're, why they exist and just control them and tell them to peek this and hold this and go there do not touch the blue door. Do not put, you know, they'll tell them what not to do. They'll tell them when to do things. They'll, tell, they'll yell at them for doing something wrong, but they won't let anybody know why. Okay. But we're not playing an RTS. We're playing, we're playing a very fluid, very active, very action heavy FPS game. And you have to trust your teammates and you have to get everybody on the same page, but you can't do that by telling every single person what to do every moment. It's not possible. So the best way to achieve that instead which would be great if it was an RTS and you could control all your pieces. But the way, best way to achieve that instead is to talk about the map philosophy. And then that way people can learn for themselves in the same direction as you. And if you're right about your map philosophy, then people will learn, will, will eventually learn correctly. If you're wrong, then you're maybe you're, you'll learn. Okay. Or maybe that will come up in discussions, but if you cannot, you cannot convince someone that getting to, you know, getting to back six in this angle is a really important round part of our T rounds, then either you're a shit IGL, you have bad teammates or you have no one respects you something like that. Okay. This, this should be easy to convey, uh, as to why, why it's an important spot to get, why you, why you want to get it in, in, you know, a T site execute or why you want to be here on a default or whatever. What if I don't understand the map philosophy at a certain map? That's actually another thing. So talking to your teammates can teach you as well, right? Like, uh, if you, you, you might be wrong about stuff and your, 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 your teammates, even if you don't think they're as smart as you or something, they might have ideas that you haven't thought about and if you're willing to be brave enough to share what you believe is like, uh, your, your overall philosophy on something, 
then it can also be challenged, which can also be a growing experience for you as an IGL. How can I get good at decision making? Uh, what's right, but in the heat of the moment, I do uh, stupid stuff. I think I think the best way is to I think what do I talked about earlier when when you you know when you're about to when you're about to make a play, think about what you're why you're making the play. Is somebody standing in a corner you think that they're here or not? Am I do I need to move? Why am I making this play? Am I making this play because I don't know what to do? Because that's not a good reason. Try to try to try to take a guess as to where people are. I'd say is the best, most simple advice, Goodman. Try to take a guess as to where where you think people are, and then make them move off of that. How, how do you uh, grind ten hours a day if you don't like what you do, but you need to do this? Uh, goals. I mean, some people, you know, you might not be doing. You might not have a. You just need to have a goal. If you have a goal, then all of the shit stuff in the middle, you can get over it. If you don't have a goal that's clear enough or specific enough, then you won't be able to do the grind. And uh, that's the bottom line. The more clear your goal, the easier the grind will be. The more you'll believe you can do it. How to learn and analyze from your previous games? Um, I just try to th try to watch a game where you, you played recently and also play your games with the knowledge that you're going to watch them later. So then... When you watch the game, you'll remember what you were thinking in the moment. That moment where you felt like you're frozen in place. Like, you know, you're like here. You're like here after the post plant. And you're like, fuck. Do I move or do I just sit? And then you die. But you watch the demo and you'll see on x-ray. Oh, there was a guy here. Oh, my teammate shot. And there was a guy busy Z. I I could have jumped out right there. You know, that's what a demo will teach you. All those moments where you doubted yourself, it's free cheats you gotta watch the x-ray and uh, but like if you constantly if you always play scared you'll never learn actually you know like if you always are the guy who just sits here and doesn't move because you're scared then you never learn to do anything except for sit here because you're scared sometimes that's why it can help if you're naturally like a more cautious player to watch the demo yeah you can push your boundaries i mean that's why you play pugs and stuff don't treat pugs like major finals don't 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 be an idiot because you don't want to like watch the demo and watch yourself do stupid shit you know is stupid but how to do a Tarek step back we've decided to Tarek step back has become too mythological so now we can we can never actually explain the Tarek step back we can only ever point it out we can twitch clip it um we can discuss it but we can't actually it's more like a Tarek step back is like a, a bigfoot now it's the best way to set up a default on Inferno T side. Okay, so one thing one thing about defaults is just that you have, you should have more than one default. How to take banana without spending all the nades? Oh, uh, okay. Well, that can be more of a timing thing. I mean, one thing I like that EG did was that they would do before they used to do this really cool thing where they'd have like everybody wait here, bottom B was smoked, they'd wait. But this would always be a situation where they didn't think someone was deep B or that they thought like an opera was holding from back or whatever. And they just basically just use a single window flash and would pop out. And then they have a second follow-up flash uh, that they would, that would land like right around the corner and they'd have like a, whatever their second flash, something like this. And then they just keep going and then they have a God flash that comes over. And then they have the, you know, a CT smoke and then boom, they're in the site. How do you take arch control? Okay. Oh yeah. So, okay. Sorry about defaults before we go, your default, you should have more than one default on every map, right? You should have your, let's do a halls default this round. So you have a specific way to take halls control. So let's take a look at like, what did we look at recently? Uh, a liege and Nafly. So I'm a liege. All right. So I walk up here. Nafly on the other side is, is coming up this way, taking their time on every angle, holding in position, swinging slowly, checking, boom. Nafly holds, Alige swings, peaks this, and then Nafly will trade after or not. Then boom, you leave Nafly in halls, Alige, he gets out, he'll go back and, and you're trying to establish some kind of control, deny some information. And then your goal of your default is like, Get top mid control this way. Clear out all of these close angles. I should throw that smoke first, I guess, but I guess the smoke would land here. Molly here. And, you know, if you flash the opera off or you molly them off or whatever, 
your goal is to take bracket control with like one smoke or something, clear all these close angles, and then you can leave Nathly in the halls in this position. You come back for top B. All the while, Stewie was lurking up. If no one's coming to take information, you're you're grabbing uh, top banana control with two players or something, and then you're picking a site and then you're hitting it. You did a halls default where you have two players in the halls or in one situation you might have everybody wait for uh, or do a banana default but you just think about what you need to where you need to allocate your resources in terms of and your resources are your players right let's say you're on dust two you might have a tunnels default with four players in tunnels and one outside long smoking fast cats and and then throwing some stuff or you might have uh, a long default where you have or an anti-eco which is another default where you have player top mid a player uh, in spawn, a player outside long, a player in tunnels, outside tunnels, everybody holding a different position for a different purpose um, of putting different kinds of pressure on the map. But you don't just have necessarily one, but um, I think the idea of a default is to spread out, to punish pushes, to apply some pressure, and to lean towards something, an idea, and to have a, a couple of different defaults so that you can lean into different kinds of pressure really easily. B or A typically. So like, you know, two defaults might be enough for most people in an anti-eco. Yeah, sometimes banana is is it's 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 not it's unmerciful, right? Like you you're going to you're going to you you're going to take damage. Like look, even look at device, right? He'll come out, there'll be a smoke here and device will come out and he'll he'll wait, he'll try to punish if people peek. If they don't peek, he'll wait here. If he waits long enough, they'll nade him or they'll nade logs if he's lucky or they'll whatever. And then he'll hold on to this information because if he holds on to this information, then he saves his teammates a whole lot of nades when they come and try to take banana after him. You know, device is going to sit here and he's going to eat damage and he's probably not going to win his fight, but it's device. So he's going to get two. But uh, there are certain positions where you will take damage and banana, the guy on your banana default is one of them. Why are you not a, a tier one player? I don't know if I ever, I ever could have been, but uh, I was, I just stopped playing after I played. I played one, I played one season of main and then I just started casting. I was already done when I started casting. So I, I wanted to be a pro, but um, that was a long time ago. Now I'm very happy in my position as a caster. I think, I think my brain is mashed potatoes now. So I hope that was uh, instructive. I think I'm, I'm done for the day. There's a lot there. I hope that was good. I, I do want to do more IGL talks and stuff like that so people can get their teams off the ground. I think at least I have the, I, like I um, can at least help with that stuff.